Hey students, today's animation inspiration comes from this amazing site right here and most particularly this amazing gradient effect that we're going to see twice. Ooh, a student reached out to me and asked if I could nerd swipe this effect. And I wasn't familiar with that term, but I got an idea of what he meant. Now, when I first saw this, I was just blown away by like the beauty of these gradients here. And I started to think, how is it done? Is there something with CSS gradient syntax, if I stack them on top of each other, that I get this really nice smooth blending and move around certain gradient stops? Or maybe it was SVG. And I just sort of was like racking my brain over how did these beautiful gradients come to be and how are they animated? Well, what I decided to do instead of play around for hours was just do the good old right click and inspect. And what we'll see here is that when I scroll, you're going to see that this element is getting a transform rotate X applied, okay? So hmm, what exactly is rotating? Well, we dig on down into the DOM and you'll see here, ooh, there's this image, which is a gradient. So literally this image here at full size is really big and they're just doing a rotation X on it. It's incredibly simple and clever. So I was eager to build my own basic prototype and this is what I came up with for you. Ooh, you'll see that when we start out, that these gradients are really thin, okay? They get a little bit buried behind GS Dev Tools here, but as they expand, it's almost like the purple is pulling away from the rest of them. Now, I put this FPO in the image because I don't think we should be using the exact images from the site. That just would not be fair. So I made some alterations and I'm loading my own from CodePen. In the JavaScript, I created a very simple timeline. It could have been one tween, but anyway, we're just animating the image from a rotation X of 90 with the transform origin being at the bottom, okay? It's sort of rotating around the bottom here. And as I scrub slowly, we definitely get this illusion of this lighter part of the gradient separating and moving up and getting narrower and it just looks really sort of interesting. But what I want to point out here is that although we're using that rotation X of 90, it's really not a true 3D effect. It's almost like it's just getting vertically stretched. And to prove this to you, I'm going to go into the CSS and my image is inside a gradient wrapper. I'm going to give the gradient wrapper a perspective of 800 pixels. And what that's going to do is give us a true 3D effect. You can literally see that that image is leaning back and then it's coming forward, okay? And that's not what we've been seeing. In fact, I could go ahead, get rid of the perspective 800 pixels, and I could change this rotation X90 to scale Y of zero. And again, you'll see this stretch that looked very much like the rotation X from before. There might be a slight difference, but it almost looks identical. So those were my learnings after just exploring the behind the scenes of that site for just a few moments. So if you wanna play with this file, check out the link in the YouTube description below. And for my Creative Coding Club students and GSAP Summer Camp students, I created this special bonus version where I've added some scrolling, okay? You'll see here that as I scroll down, again, we get that sort of gradient separation, but all we're doing is stretching that gradient image. When we get to it being fully done, we'll bring in this sort of slightly pinned section where boom, a fun little animation plays back and forth, and we're pinned for just a few pixels, and then the next gradient is going to come in, okay? So back to the pinned section, as I come down, look here, it's almost like a beautiful sunrise. As I scroll, those gradients sort of separate, and there we have my FPO image that starts at black and then goes through these colors all the way to full white. Now, if you want to create a beautiful gradient image like that, I am not the person to ask, all right? I'm here just to show you the mechanics of how these things are built. And everything I'm doing here is really just the basics of Scroll Trigger that I cover in Scroll Trigger Express and my many, many bonus lessons, all right? 
But while we're here, I will show you that I had to change my HTML just a little bit to get some pixel perfect filling of the image inside its container div. You'll notice that I have a gradient trigger up here. And when we go into my JavaScript, you'll see that the first scroll trigger is using gradient trigger dot top. And we're starting it when the top of that div reaches the bottom of the viewport. And we're ending when the bottom of the div reaches the bottom of the viewport, all right? So basically we're starting off right with the top of the trigger right at the bottom of the viewport. So that's why our animation begins immediately as I start scrolling. And if I go up here, you'll see that top Annie is the animation that I'm using on the top image. And then there's just some stuff for that little text effect that I'm doing in the middle with a little bit of a stagger. So as I come down here, after we've totally stretched that gradient out, you're going to see that we boom, pin this section as I said, it stays there for a little bit, unpins, and then the sun rises into beauty. So again, all my students are gonna get this file, and if you have no idea what this stuff means, head on over to creativecodingclub.com. My comprehensive GSAP training can't be beat, and it's gonna help you go from beginner to pro. Check it out. Thanks so much for your support.